Uh, welcome to Brief History Conspiracy. Uh, this week, 9-11, Other Theories. So if you're new to our channel, please like, subscribe, um, hit that bell notification and leave a comment because, um, uh, well, I can't be bothered to do all the research. It actually really does help probably get comments. <laughs> so, <laughs> helps me point me in the right direction. So, um, and this is really what this episode is going to be about is, is you know, is comments that we've had on um, our previous September 11 series. And then we'll do a little bit of a conclusion and actually say what we actually think. Yeah, yeah, I, right. th I think, think that's a good way to round it all up. Okay, so one of the things we get a lot is that the buildings, particularly the Twin Towers, they didn't just collapse and break, they actually were vaporised. Right, you know, you see that big cloud, didn't you, going go through the island of Manhattan. And, yes. Um, and filled in tight. Um, also, almost almost uh, something like that kind of pyroclastic flow from a, a, a vol exactly volcano. Like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the concrete didn't break up, it was vaporised. That's what, that's the big argument. Um, another thing is you, we see in the core, you know, we, we had that um, on our Twin Towers mm -hmm. episode, we talked about um, how the heat in the, uh, in the core stayed for like months, months and it was like a couple of thousand degrees. You see chunks of metal being pulled out of the ground and they just burst into flames as soon as they... Um, they so and there's the pools of molten aluminium that people yeah. were reporting. Yeah. But also melted rock. They're actually, that you see... It's like sheared rock that's been melted and pooled and then cooled again, and it's um, so. A lot of is how can this have happened from the you know the, the the planes going into the building and the and the collapse. One of the theories I get a lot is that it was a laser weapon, that the buildings were actually hit by a space based laser weapon. Now initially, I thought, yeah, hey, okay, I'm thinking that you know it's like an Independence Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... <laughs> Yeah, it, right. mm. it's a difficult one to get your head around. When, but I looked into the technology. What is available and what what are people actually talking about okay. in, in in laser weapon technology in the American military at the moment, and there is they're, they're quite open. They are trying to devise laser based weapons to knock interballistic nuclear missiles out of the sky. I mean, that's been going back from the Star Wars project. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say this has been going 80s. back. Yeah, it's been going back um, decades, isn't it? And let's be honest, if if the Americans could develop a space-based weapon that could hit the ground and potentially destroy a building... They'd do it. They'd want it, wouldn't they? Oh, they'd, yeah, yeah. They would want that technology. The way I'm guessing it works, though, is, is I'm guessing generally that it will be directly overhead, so the laser will come directly from the top of the building, it would not impact from the side. So it'd be, you'd, yeah. have to, you'd have to be... I think the idea is that the planes hit and then the laser finished it off. I think is the right, idea. Right, okay. We're not arguing, even though we have had a lot of if theories you, that the gonna... planes never went into the building at all and it was a hologram, but I, have I heard can't that. get my head around that. that but thing. I just don't know, I don't know, there's too many different angles of, of the yeah. planes hitting the towers, isn't there, from different places in New York? Some of the evidence comes from that is because some of the video technology, some of the videos of the aircraft coming in, if there's like um, an object in front and the airplane goes behind, it looks like the wing disappears and they're saying that's evidence that it's a hologram it's not real because it isn't it's an evidence of low pixelating cameras and they're not digital cameras like that today you've got to remember this is still 20 years ago nearly yeah. um, but a lot of these guys they argue that the plane's impact wasn't enough this is the same thing as where they argue about the um that there must have been explosives mm -hmm. um or thermite and all this sort of thing because the impact from the planes isn't enough to take the building down so the plane goes in the laser and, weapon and the fact and that the people that have analyzed the, the debris have found mm -hmm. thermite, the, 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 yeah. the compound of, of, of um, thermite or the brand, isn't it? Thermite's the brand and then thermite's... Nanothermite is a type of thermite that's higher in sulphur, basically. So there's, there's, there's like 10 different ways you can mix right. thermite. Okay. Um, so that's one of the reasons why they think they see this found this sulphurized steel, was because that was a the reaction with the thermite. Um, maybe. So, laser weapon though. There's a load. There, there is loads of evidence that the, the Americans are working on this technology, and yes. space-based lasers work really well because um, there's no atmosphere, and lasers don't really like atmosphere. The light and the energy gets dissipated as it hits droplets of water, droplets of oxygen, droplets of things. In space, there's nothing to hit, and they're, they're really they're, they could be very effective. And space-based weapons like this 
we, if the Americans had them, they wouldn't be allowed to admit they had them. No. Because there's treaties yes, they'd be about weaponising. Well, technology yeah. wins a war in America has probably got a hell of a lot of secret technology, to be honest. The technology would be legal, um, though, that's my point. There is a treaty about not weaponising space in, in order. So this would be an illegal weapon system. And, and all have. countries in the past have always followed all the treaties they've signed up to, oh, haven't yeah. they? But my point being, they've probably <laughs> got them. They're just not allowed to say they've got them. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's exactly where I'm at. Um, I'm at the same place as you then on, on that, really. So the technology, um, in theory, could think, but being able to hit a target on the ground is different. A railgun, as they sometimes uh, call them in yeah, video well, games. Yeah, well, a railgun is, um, <laughs> is firing a projectile using magnetic energy. Is that what the rail goes? Yeah, right, okay. so you have a magnetic... It's a rail because, yes, it's a rail of magnetic things and then you take the projectile and it's, and it's, it, it's rather than having an explosion projectile, you have a magnetic... It accelerates through the magnetic field, basically. Yeah. So you yeah, can go okay. much, much quicker. And they, again, railgun technology does work. There's a nuclear... Um, there's a big thing at the moment between the Americans and the Russians about this new ballistic weapon system that's mm -hmm. non-nuclear, but what you do is you get basically a very heavy rocket... Mm -hmm. Um, using super heavy elements, um, you fire it up into the thing, and when it comes back down, it comes down with so much ballistic energy, it has the energy of a nuclear weapon, but without any radiation, any um, other sort of impact, because just feel like it's like being hit by a meteorite sort of thing. Yeah, no, they're, just, so they're just, yeah, okay, wow. You just put it really, really fast, and they are horribly illegal, and the Americans and Russians are working on them. It could have been something like that that hit the, again, hit the Twin Towers, and we there'd be no evidence. When I started Googling this, though, and I started looking at um, space-based weapons mm -hmm. and, and laser technology, one of the... Um, this next gov is a watchdog for the American military. And um, they got highlighted that the um, uh, Naval Surface Warfare Centre put out a request for a company to destroy a load of um, information in White Sands. Oh, right. And it was all laser-based technology information. Um, 40... I mean, I've looked... Yeah, four thousand pounds of research material. It's all floppy disks, disk drives, paper, all the material, and it was all based on laser weaponry. Okay. As soon as the watchdog went, why are you why are you asking them to do that? It went away, and the um, the research centre said, uh, "What war crest?" And they pretended like it hadn't happened, which is odd. And this was only in the last year, so they had right. a load of research material on laser technology that they wanted destroyed. As soon as somebody said why they changed their minds and decided that it, it didn't happen. That's odd. Um, I don't know if it's anything to do with this, I just thought it was odd when I was looking yeah, at it. Yeah, it's odd, it's odd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's too too many, too many much time has elapsed since September yeah. 11th to be related just shows to, to that prove any relationship. Yeah. That when they talk about these energy weapons, they, they, they're still very, very secretive about it. But they are yes. currently developing a 300 kilowatt weapon that they eventually want to mount on aircraft as a defence system against um, missiles. So, I mean, this technology is being developed and we are going to be having mm. laser weapons in warfare very, very shortly, you know, if not already. So, I don't know, it just seems like to go to, a, if you could destroy what you wanted to with a laser from, from space. Mm. It's an easy way to do it, isn't it? Well, I don't know. You just would you would you would you go through the whole planes hitting it as the cover up to then do it that way? Well, it's either that though, mate, or the building would just collapse all on its own, and people would be like, "What the bloody hell just happened?" It'd be like well, building. Yes. But the benefit to using a laser weapon in this instance is it would leave no evidence. That's true. That's so true. So that is the benefit to the theory. I think why the theory's got legs. They, they wouldn't. There would be no evidence. Personally, okay. I don't think that the technology exists. Um, and it's not the fact. It's it's shooting through thirty, forty miles worth of atmosphere. Is the problem lasers don't go through the atmosphere well the range of the, the the weapons we're talking about here are hundreds of meters maybe a few miles then they're not that they, they don't have sophisticated you get a laser pointer and try and point it at a distance it diffuses really quickly you can't yeah do it that's over true. A long distance. yeah and that atmosphere does i know that's a much less powerful laser obviously but it, it's an example of, of of what i'm talking about the energy is is but I suppose if you had a nuclear powered satellite in orbit where power was you had enough energy maybe yeah I just I think it's I don't know I find it hard to, to believe that it was some laser yeah. technology that was involved I don't think they'd showcase like, that technology like, it's not like it would be um, like Independence Day we see a blue light come down and whoosh, cause that's not how lasers work you see no. a lot of these images on Facebook and you see this orange light coming out from the sky and a fire starting they're saying, they're saying oh, these, all these forest fires have been set off by um, 
uh, the space based weapons. Yeah. Not, a lot of the time it's just glare off the sunrise or photoshopped. Um, yeah, if you uh, wanted to start a forest fire in California in the middle of summer, you would just go along with a match and go, you wouldn't have a space based laser weapon system start the fire. You just need a magnifying glass. In fact, you just yeah. need two lenses. You don't even need yeah, exactly. anything more than that. Match. Um, and but like I said, you could use this weapon if it existed. And you wouldn't see a laser beam coming from space, and it would the, the building would. Start. But okay, one of the things to talk about is that the concrete vaporized. I think it would. I think the building is collapsing, and there's got hundreds of thousands of tons of force going down. These floors are little thin layers of concrete, and each floor, um, I could see it would vaporize. Um, is it just the energy is insane. Yes, the, 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 yeah, the, 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 yeah, the, 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 the kinetic energy from the weight of the material above falling down. I do think mm. you could 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 potentially vaporize concrete, some of the concrete yeah. from the heat. And, the, and I also the, think the, the energy the then going immediately into the ground as well would be phenomenal. So I, I do wonder about this <coughs> melted steel, <coughs> melted thing. I mean, friction. Just rub your hands together and feel the heat. Now imagine that a million times more powerful you know the the, the, the the energy yeah the, 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 there will be a lot of heat it collapsed yeah, created so. from just the mm. collapse of it well we assume of a building that large because of all of the material falling onto that same spot continually yeah, exactly. and just pounding just the, the pressure and, and yeah. instantly as well as yeah as well. so but one of the other theories then we get to is mm -hmm. micronuclear weapons right so one person said to me that um, they were hidden under the Twin Towers when they were constructed. I immediately sort of went, oh. and, and micronuclear weapons. Micro nukes. Really? I mean, what, 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 what is, how much is a micro nuke supposed to produce in terms of uh, the, oh, the size well, of the explosion? Now I started to getting into a weapon. I started just out of curiosity. <laughs> right. So the American government is actually just developed and released, and then they're actually put on the new Trident system. Um, what they call sub nukes, and there's the W P fifty four nuclear weapon system, and now these should scare the crap out of you. They're basically designing weapons that are less powerful. The only reason to design a weapon that's less powerful is because that way it's more usable, and that's quite scary. So some of these weapons they have uh, power between ten and a thousand, um, ten and ten thousand tons of TNT um, power. Okay. Um, they call that in kilotons, so 10 to 100 kilotons of energy. Aren't normal nuclear bombs megatons, I believe? Yeah, they're far more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I mean, you get into and you're... H bombs and things, they're ridiculously powerful. Um, so, what are these mini nukes? Are they still. You're still working the same basis. You're still splitting the the atom. Yeah, there. it's just it's just a small. Slightly you, you, more you take a nuclear material. You implode that nuclear material. This these are called implosive nuclear weapons rather than H bombs or nitrogen uh, uh, anything bombs. Yeah. So okay. um, so these are these these small weapons, and then they, they do terrify me. And these are aboard uh, Trident nuclear weapons. They, they, these exist now, and these smaller bombs. Uh, micro nuclear weapons. Right, okay. That are, um, I don't think they used to be called schnooks, didn't they? These yes. mini nuclear uh, suitcase, suitcase nukes, 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 wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. This is something that generally used to keep me up when I was a kid, because I remember a story about how Russia had built about 12 of these things, and then the the, the communist collapse, and then after the dust had settled, they went, we could only find eight. <laughs> it's like they've lost like four of these damn things. Um, <laughs> Have we lost four suitcase nukes? Um, yeah, exactly. It was, it was terrifying. Um, but that's what they think, and these theoretically can be only like five or six inches big. They can fit into a into a thing, and they have a, a kiloton yield of about zero point one nine, so about a hundred and ninety tons of TNT sort of thing, which would still be a really really big explosion. But we're not talking mushroom cloud and and vaporizing. Yeah, and, and vaporizing an entire yeah. city. Yeah. No. But the, the, you the still thing, take out a few blocks, I imagine. Oh yeah, it'd be a big explosion, uh, uh, and it would vaporize a lot of concrete. Yeah. The thing is with me though, the, the twin towers in particular, they collapsed from the top down. There was a collapse, and then they went down. A nuclear weapon in the basement would go boom up, wouldn't it? 
and and then the building would it would have been a very very different type of explosion I imagine. Yeah, and I don't think you would have had the controlled demolition into its own footprint. No, the, the, exactly. The, 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 it would have been a like, massive well, explosion. I should, oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that because that's that's contriving that it was definitely controlled and that it was a demolition. But oh, sorry, the the destruction of the mm -hmm. twin towers into its own footprint. If you go back to our twin yeah, tower episode, just, we do disagree on this a little bit, don't we? Because I actually generally think that the planes going into the building would have been enough because I don't think this is a very well designed building. Um, I think that maybe there could have been weakening. Mm -hmm. um, as specific places, but I think that the the planes going into I think people the 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 truth is underestimate how you know how how much damage would have been caused by those planes yeah how massive the force involved yeah. and the momentum that builds from from when the the, the top mm. top starts collapsing the damage uh, downwards or collapsing from the the, mm. the impact zone of yeah. the floor that was impacted the thing about the nuclear weapons. Is though that the interesting debate I had with a chap about it was he then said that they were planted by Mossad, right? And now I mean, initially I sort of well, why would Israel and the um, Israeli intelligence service get involved in this if they were caught? It's not like there's a long history of links between the Israeli Mossad and the CIA. Well, they're basically the same. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it? Israel's the fifty-first state of America, and yeah, lots of Israel's ways the it 51st is. State. Yeah, they get yeah. billions of dollars of funding. The, Jew oh, the Jewish yeah. lobby is the biggest lobby in America. Yeah. Um, now, I, I, I like to be very, very careful when I'm talking about this because I do think a lot of people have agendas when it starts talking about the Israelis and the possibly, Jews possibly. in general. So I'm very cautious about this. But he, he basically argued, the chap I was talking to, uh, he basically argued that the Israelis weren't attacking America, they were in on it. The American, the elements within the American government used Mossad to plant these weapons or oh. to, to, to plant the thermite or whatever. And so they were yep. in collusion with each other. Well, oh. that's less risky for the Israelis then because they're not going to get... Because I was going to say, if they got caught attacking America, it would be war, you know? They'd be yeah. wiped off the face of the earth in seconds. They would, And they'd lose all their funding and, you know, whatever. Yes, so I don't believe they're operating on their own. No. I think they're in collusion with the American government if, if they were involved. Yeah. And but it, does, if, it yeah. does make a lot of sense when you think about it. Yeah. Using members of the Israeli Mossad and perhaps some Israeli citizens to pose as Arabs yeah. to destroy uh, to destroy a, a, a massive American landmark in order mm -hmm. for America to get the American people behind the invasion and occupation of Israel's yeah. enemies in its locality. Exactly. The, the thing is, is, if I was thinking about... Think about if, if you were planning this, right? Yeah. So, in your, again, this isn't... When we're talking about the American government, we're talking about small parts of the American government. Oh, um, this would be very yeah. compartmentalised. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. but if I was planning this, I would want a patsy. I would want somebody, for one, that would want to do it. Yeah. And the Israeli government would have motivation for being involved in this because they've been invaded repeatedly since the 70s. And, you know, the Yom Kippur War, the, the, Iran come out regularly and say that we want to push them into the sea and they and they denounce the state and they get attacked constantly anything that destabilizes the middle east would be a benefit to the israeli government so if the american or elements of the american government went to israel and said we want you to do this and this mm -hmm. is the result they would do it because these are people that are constantly attacked and this would be massively beneficial to them so yes the israeli mossad the intelligence agency is also known as one of the top intelligence agencies in the world, not far behind, you know, the CIA or yeah. MI5 and MI6. You start talking about their special forces as well. They are terrifying. Um, at being British, I personally believe the SAS are the greatest armed force in the world, except for the Israelis. <laughs> because, I mean, they do it. Do you know what I mean? They actually fight day in, day out. They actually are doing it, and they are yeah. terrifying. It just, just reminds me of the character from uh, oh, that Adam Sandler film. Meet the Zohan, where he plays the Israeli <laughs> yeah. counter-terrorist that becomes a hairdresser. <laughs> you see legs coming up, playing like that, and kicking. <laughs> smell it, <laughs> smell it, no, take it. <laughs> um, well, no, they're just focused, man. That's the thing. They are. They have a singular focus. And that is one of the biggest things. You, know, you always say, you win a fight, whoever, did, you know, whoever hesitates first is lost. You know, when you've got two people of similar skill and ability, it's hesitation that loses. And they don't hesitate because they're focused. You know, yeah, they're makes terrifying. sense. Makes sense. So this argument actually did get me thinking and thinking, I could see that. And there are obviously stories we've discussed before about Mossad agents potentially being seen on the day. Well, there was that story, wasn't there? Yeah, about um, five hmm. five Israelis getting arrested in a van on George Washington Bridge that hmm. tested positive for explosives. 
Mm. Um, I think two of them were confirmed to be members of the Israeli Mossad, and all five of them were just secretly take, uh, flown back yeah. to uh, Israel within yeah. about 24 hours. They were back in Israel. Yeah, oh, see, I don't know if that story is true. No, or I'm not. not I'm not so sure to the validity of it. No. Mm. And but, like I said, there are people with agendas when it comes to the Israelis, but. So I'm careful. But at the end of the day, when you always talk about whenever we do a conspiracy theory, you always ask why. And on this one, it's logical. It kind of does make sense. It kind of works. Israel have got a very big interest in getting America more involved in fighting in the Middle East. Yeah. Given that there's a big proxy war going on, basically, between Iran and Saudi Arabia that has been going on for decades, mm -hmm. um, and all the other fighting in the other countries in between is essentially just oh, for, yeah, that, right. for that proxy. We'll look at Syria at the moment. Yeah. We haven't even mentioned crisis actors, but I, I, Ooh, again, yes. it's one of those things that I... That's I, another interesting topic. I'm wary about crisis actors, mm. but not really because of what happened in 9-11, but because how it's been used since, and how now every thing that happens, there's crisis actors being thrown at it. And... There is, there is that one video, though, of that one guy that gave a, a, uh, an interview on 9-11 mm -hmm. telling us how he watched both Twin Towers get hit and then both of them collapse, mostly due to structural failure. Yes, and, 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 and I love the bloke in the background in the suit. suit. You can always see him going, pull him, pull him, pull him. he starts to waffle a bit. And <laughs> like, get out of him like <laughs> they, they, There's two or three things like this. And, and, and doesn't one of them mention Osama bin Laden or, or Al-Qaeda? Yeah. The day? I'm being and, and, interviewed on the street. I mean, it's like, what the hell? And Giving America um, was playing complete naivety to mm -hmm. the events of that day occurring, it's a phenomenal how quick they managed to blame it on Osama bin Laden. Who, um, I have actually found it was on the same day. In America, it yeah. was by about five or six o'clock that night. So within eight or nine hours of the attack, they were already they, they, naming Osama bin Laden. Laden. I just think that's too quick for an attack that you didn't know. Yeah. He didn't happened. admit it for two or three weeks. Yeah. So, so it's, it, it, that's a dodgy one. And you were talking me. about patsies earlier. Yeah. Well, Osama bin Laden, what a great patsy. What if yeah, he wasn't yeah. involved in it at all? And he was just a scapegoat for the war on terror for the next ten years. Yeah. And then he may have took advantage of it because of um, it, well, it pushed the movement forwards. I don't know, but I you got to wonder whether he was ever involved. So I don't know, supposedly but. he's the estranged child, isn't he, of the Bin Laden family? That's the official story behind Osama, mm. and that mm. and that's why it's not really that important that the Bush family and the Bin Laden family have stakes in the Carlisle Oil Group, which yeah. deals with. Because he's the black sheep. Because he's the black sheep of the family. However, what if that's all just a lie and he's no mm -hmm. black sheep and he was just a willing patsy for financial gain to be the head, to be this kingpin of the war on terror for America's war games? And really, mm -hmm. the CIA have just been looking after him for 10, 10 years since I, I'm, until, they, I, I, until, they, until they killed him and then we never saw his body. The CIA were very much involved in Osama bin Laden from his youth. I mean, he was, I think, a something like it may... And then this is just speculation. He may have actually been um, a, a loyalist. He may have been quite loyal to the Americans and just done what he was told. Well, there's, there's theories that online that talk about him being a CIA double agent and his, mm -hmm. his uh, operator handle at the CIA was Ted Osman. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, again, See? I don't. I wouldn't quote that as being factual, but there no. is that floating about as a bit of hearsay and it just makes you well given the fact that he was involved mm -hmm. in the training with the wasn't he part of the mujahideen when yeah. the, they were trained to fight against I mean. the was, russians yeah he was a, he was like so, churchill to the to the afghans yeah. during um during the russian invasion mm. um which is one of the reasons why they didn't want to give him up when we when he was um a, accused of these attacks um al-qaeda right. didn't want to give him up Apart but, from the fact that he was probably in Pakistan oh, earlier Pakistan than we thought right he was. Um. Yeah. <laughs> but if we get break break down the attack to a very simple thing, and we're talking about the invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan, nothing to do with 9-11, really. To illegal, we invaded illegal Iraq wars. because we mm -hmm. wanted to, and we it was a revenge. We felt like we had to invade somebody, and we thought, well, we'll invade Iraq. Afghanistan was vaguely to do with Osama bin Laden, but again, really nothing to do with 9-11. Um, it was just an excuse to invade those countries. Yeah, um, primarily for the resources that they hold, I believe. Oil and destabilise in the Middle East, which we want to do, because we want to keep oil prices down. Yeah. Um, well, also you want to keep threatening your uh, enemies to uh, sell oil in the dollar, because it mm -hmm. props up the American um, 
the, the American yeah. dollar basically yeah. and stops America's about, economy from collapsing. About half of the American economy is based on the dollar um, being being used to buy oil. Um, so that's hence hence why anybody that threatens to mm -hmm. sell oil not in the yeah. dollar or the gold standard ends up becoming America's enemy. So yeah. Gaddafi threatened to create a gold standard for the African nations and to stop selling oil in the dollar. Yep. What happened to Gaddafi? Mm. Syria. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, um, a there's, a, there's a theme. Saddam Hussein threatened to sell it in the euro. Yep. What uh, happened to Saddam? So After probably being a puppet they installed and was willing to do business for many years, grew tired of his masters and mm. decided to uh, go against them to his detriment. And the invasion of Iraq makes absolute because he was zero threat. He wasn't even a threat to his own people anymore. Um, we had completely crippled that country's ability to fight. Um, which we then show because we invaded it in three days. You know, it's like, we, uh, in all our other videos, we've talked about what we think about each in, in, individual instance, so we're not going to rehash that. But it, it comes down to whether the Americans orchestrated this attack or whether they just took advantage of it. Why? Why? Did, what? What was the point? And I think it basically breaks down to three things. Myself is it money, power, and control. Yep. Yeah. 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 I'd, yeah, I'd agree. I think the money was used to buy off the different players mm -hmm. involved, like Larry Silverstein. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he now a very wealthy man. But the people that were really involved in this, the people that really planned it or anything, I don't think they were really bothered about the money. I think they're thinking about the control and the power. And they yeah, the, the pe these are the people with more spades. money than they could ever spend mm -hmm. in their lifetimes. So I suppose once definitely. money is no longer really an issue for you because mm -hmm. it's never ending for you essentially mm -hmm. then power and control become much more prevalent than money don't they so yeah. i agree with you to say i think you think you're right i think you'd lose the i don't think they're the, as bothered the, don't get they, me wrong a billion quid would be very nice and they wouldn't say no to oh, it but and, i don't think that's their motive i don't think that's their no. primary motive then they would have to pay off certain people maybe yeah. that's right maybe that's why larry silverstein got paid out from um the uh, insurance company two times maybe he had a deal mm. in cahoots with the powers that be that are sort mm -hmm. of control these people and the insurance mm. company was told to pay him out twice as bribe money lent on him a little bit yeah, yeah. the courts lent on no, him no not, not so much the courts but just yeah. people with very high positions mm. of power and influence that mm. can still make people these do what they want influence. yeah yeah and that's it for me that's what it, this all boils down to for me it's the power and control and anybody that we have had an occasional message going oh you're still talking about this why are you still talking about 9-11 for one it's history but for two, we're still actually being affected by this today. Those who fail to study history are doomed to repeat the mistakes of their predecessors. Damn right. And that's why you study history, and that's why it's not irrelevant from 20 years ago, since it's shaped the last 20 years of the yeah. modern world. Oh, the people that talk about that, they say, why are you talking about this? We're going to talk about Nazis in a few weeks. <laughs> I mean, that was yeah, 70 again, years ago. But, yeah, <laughs> but, but a massive effect on yeah. the world at that time and where it... And, and, and the course of history from, yeah. from, from that point to Which now. Which it changes so even until today. It, it, it still changes us today. It still impacts our lives. Even World War II still impacts our lives today. It impacts our culture. It impacts who we are. 9-11 yeah. massively impacts the way we mm. live our lives today. Well, all the freedoms that were taken away from people following the Patriots Act in America or mm. the similar laws that were imposed in the United Kingdom around being classified yeah. as a terrorist by your government and the similar laws in Europe after the Madrid bombings. And it doesn't affect most people. Most people wander around going, well, how, what freedoms have I had removed? And it's actually, you've had several freedoms removed. But as long as you don't end up on the wrong side of it, you don't really notice. It's like there's no. a curtain, an invisible curtain that's been pulled that's over. That's a good us. way of putting it, yeah. Invisible and curtain, yeah. It, we don't, yeah, okay, you don't see it because you've got 20 different types of Costa. You've got your Amazon vouchers coming. You've got your thing, yeah, now you've got all oh, we've got this illusion of choice that we talk about. Mm. There are people, though, that, however, are in Guantanamo, or, oh, goodness, there'll be people we've never heard of there's that have in, their rights stripped. Yeah, there's people in prison in Guantanamo Bay that have never been charged with anything, that have been there for decades. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're talking about you know, it's, it's essentially, it's a, it's a, it's yeah. as soon as you're classified as a terrorist, that's it, you have no rights. And who and how does how does the government decide who they classify as terrorists or not? Yeah. And what's the criteria for that? But also a lot of this still it's it's affecting people around the world. America openly operates within hundred and forty countries of the world. Aren't there only about two hundred total? I don't even think something. it's quite two hundred, hundred and ninety so, something I think, but so, um, about two hundred, yeah. They openly operate completely illegally. Yes. The CIA operate in hundred and forty countries around the world. 
That is drones operate in at least 44 countries. Drones have operated completely illegally. Legally, yes, without declaring war. Those are the effects of 9/11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and and and, and yeah. So so it's not just people's freedoms; it's countries' mm-hmm. um, freedom um, being and it's secured being America's taken. dominance for the next century. Right, so that has been our series on 9-11. Yeah. Never to be discussed again. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I don't think we'll be doing another series I'm, on 9-11. I've made so many people angry <laughs> these videos. Uh, and, and one thing also, very briefly, if you consider yourself a truther or you consider yourself a debunker, you're two sides of the same coin, and some of the arguments I've had have been ridiculous. You call yourself open-minded when you are closed-minded to the truth that you've decided. And when did somebody calling themselves a truth have become a bad thing? It's just ridiculous. So some of the conversations I've had with some people on these, you should be just, I don't want to go so far as saying you should be ashamed of yourself, but you should be open to the possibility of, of the debate. And if you are close, if you're a debunker, you're just as close-minded as any truther. Yeah, so we should all be great. trying to find a truth that makes sense to us. So... But um, I have enjoyed many of the debates we've had, except for two people, and you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, and um, we'll see you next time. Yeah, see you next week. Please like and subscribe. Yeah, do that. Do that.